So you're thinking about getting started again in the martial arts. Maybe you've been out for a while. Maybe it's been a long time. Well, let me share some of my thoughts about that. Just like the numerous reasons that we get out of the martial arts or we take a break from it, there are a lot of reasons to get back into it. And I think that's tip number one is the first and most important thing for you to do is know why you want to do it. What is bringing you back? Are you going back because you miss the people, the place, the things you used to do? Do you miss the art you used to train? Are you looking to train a new art, try something new? There's so many reasons to get back in. That's going to be the guiding force for every other decision that you make. You might be going back to start teaching because maybe you used to teach and it's been a while. Maybe you moved, maybe you did something, but it's time to teach again. Know why you want to do what you want to do. Tip number two is recognize that it's going to be just as hard. If not, I think it's probably even harder to start as it was the first time. The first time people say, and I agree, the white belt is the most difficult belt to get. For every one person on the mat, there's a hundred people who are not on the mat at all. Getting to, to the point where you can walk to that door, come inside and think about starting the martial arts, that's the hardest thing. Restarting might be harder. You know what it's like. You have maybe fears and doubts and insecurities about going back. What if I'm not as good as I used to be? What if I don't remember the things I used to know? What if people look at me differently because I've done this before? I see this a lot when people have gotten a black belt before, but then they've been out for a while and they come back. What if people don't believe that I deserve the rank that I have? Well, here's the deal. That rank is your rank and your skill is your skill. They are indeed separate. Ideally, they go together, but they don't always. If you got your black belt 20 years ago, and you haven't done anything for a while, and maybe maybe you've let yourself go, you haven't been training, haven't been doing any kind of physical activity, you haven't been hitting the weights or doing anything like that. So you're not in the same physical shape you were. You're also older than you were. Then no, your skill's not gonna be the same as it was at that time. But you're also doing something new. Maybe, maybe you're going back to the same thing, but a lot of times you go back to something different because for a lot of people, the reason we stop is because we move. We went somewhere else. We don't have that place to train available anymore. So now you're finding a new place to train. Well, first things first, it's up to you if you tell anybody that you have any skill at all. People will see it. Your skill is your skill. The things that you can do are the things that you can do. And you're going to have things that you're good at and comfortable with, that you have experience with. And you're going to have things that are new. Because anytime you train, there's going to be something that is maybe new or maybe you were never good at even before you used to do it but you weren't good at it then and you're still not good at it now everybody on the mat is their own person with their own skill set their own ability and it's okay to start over and go through those same hurdles you also might have this fear of needing to uphold something that nobody else knows about something else in your head that is there for you but isn't a part of this new school. You might have fears of what this new school is like and them doing things differently or not matching the same ways. So starting again is really difficult. It's okay to start again. I encourage you to talk to the instructor. Talk to them about what your concerns are and get a feel, get a sense for what that school is going to be like. If they really struggle with that idea for you, then maybe that might not be the right place. If they are welcoming and have, have thoughts for you on how you can get started and how you can get past some of that stuff, I think that that is probably a good place to go. Then there's the belts. Do you wear your belt? My opinion, no. Generally, the rank that you have reflects the rank that you have in a particular system or style. It shows people on the mat, I have a certain level of experience or knowledge that I can share with you. So if you're going to a new school, or a new art altogether, it doesn't reflect that anymore. Your skill will still be your skill. If you have a certain level of skill and that has been maintained, then you'll still have that level of skill. Being a reflection of what that school thinks that that rank is might not be true. So it's best to start by not doing that, by not wearing your rank. And if the instructor thinks you should wear a different rank, they're gonna make sure you know. They're gonna put you in that place. With it being different, 
you might have other things, other fundamental things that you need to learn that are just plain different, that your rank might not be equivalent to what it was somewhere else. And that's okay too. You're doing something new. Recognize that you have probably gotten older. If time has gone by, if any significant amount of time has gone by, you've gotten older than you were. Your body has changed. You are a different person. You've got different abilities or disabilities. You've gone through injuries or different things, different parts of life. So something that you feel like you should be able to do, maybe it's not realistic to think that you should be able to do it now. Maybe you need to build back up to it. Maybe it's similar to something you've done before, but it's brand new. It's different, and you don't feel good at it. Know that those things are going to happen, and know that nobody is sweating them as hard as you are. So don't let this voice be the one that makes you hold back or feel like you can't. Don't let your pre-existing knowledge get in the way of accepting new knowledge. Don't be so afraid to show that you don't know something, that you don't learn anything new, that you stand off to the side because you don't want people to see you that way. If you've done the martial arts before, that you know that you get really close with the people around you and they know who you are, it's okay to let people know who you are. If you're good at a thing or not good at a thing, nobody cares. They're all there to work together and help you, help themselves, help the people around them become better. Everybody has their own abilities, and it's okay for you to be exactly where you are with yours. Communicate what you want to get out of things. Find ways to work on that stuff outside of class, and you'll be doing just fine. Remember, why did you do this? If you did this to lose weight, get back into shape, get some kind of fitness, some activity going, then you've got different goals than somebody who's getting back into it because they used to compete and they want to compete again. Different goals than somebody who wants to maybe get the black belt they never got. Different goals than somebody who wants to learn uh, an art for tradition's sake and to carry that tradition and that history and they enjoy that component of it. Everybody's there for different reasons. And your reason will determine why you need to do the things you need to do, what you can expect, and what you're going to get out of it. But here's the most important thing. Even if you go back to an art that you've done before, even a school that you've gone to before, if it is a living art, it is something that is not dead, it continues to grow and thrive and take on new information, new perspective, new energy, then it will not be the same as when you left and try not to let that hold you back because it's okay that it's changed. In fact, we want it to change. We want it to thrive. It is living. So for it to be living means it has to change. So when you go back and there's different faces on the mat and people have different skill sets and, and maybe the art trains in different ways or has different drills or, or just different things, know that that is a part of the process and don't let it hold you back from learning because here's the deal. Something that I really love to think about is a man never crosses the same river twice. For it's not the same river, and he's not the same man. This is a fundamental thought when it comes to the passing of time. When you come back to that school after time, it may have changed. But you have too. And your memories of this place are based on your memory, which was colored by emotion and feeling, and it's why the good old days were always the good old days. When you come back, you're a new person. It's a new place. Embrace the things that are different. Don't struggle and, and rage against the things that, that are not the same. Be excited about the new opportunities. When you train something new, you might run into a similar situation where you have a certain level of skill or ability because of something else you've done. And then you don't have as much as you think you should when you go into something else. This happened to me recently. I started training judo. I've done uh, karate for a lot of years, and there was a lot of the Japanese jiu-jitsu integrated into that. Felt very confident with that. But I felt like there were parts that I was missing, and I went and I trained judo. And I immediately 
felt that I didn't know even as much as I thought I knew. I had a certain level of expectation of, of how well I thought I might do because of what I was doing. But then I got on the mat and went, I'm not that good. I don't have the abilities that I thought I had. I don't have, I'm not meeting my own expectations. But they're my own expectations. Nobody on the mat said, well, you should be able to do this. They said, Here's, try it this way. Here's a way you could think about this. Maybe it's like this. They didn't even worry about what I knew. They put the effort in to make me better. I had a choice. I could be upset and I could be depressed and demoralized by my inability, the time spent, the cost sunk into becoming who I was to that moment and then not being able to live up to that in my head when I came into a new moment. Or I could recognize that I have holes in what I know and that is exactly why I was there and that I could embrace that and be excited for the things that are going to change and the new things I'm going to learn because there is differences. If I go in and everything you're doing is what I already know how to do and I'm already good at it, then what am I getting? When you go to train somewhere, you train there because it gives you something. Not because you give it something. You might at some point give it something. But first and foremost, what does it give you? How do you choose a school? You choose a school based on, on what you get from it. Does it achieve your goals? Do you like the teacher? It doesn't matter the school or the art. If the teacher doesn't appeal to you, the way they teach, the things that they teach, the, the information that they pass to you, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And you won't get as much out of it. And it's okay that you might need to try different things or go different places and, and find one that matches you. But remember, you chose that place because of the person who taught, the things that they taught, the way that they taught them. So if you are starting again, try not to get too stuck in the ideas of, well, we used to do it this way. I was taught it like this. If you fundamentally disagree, then you're not in the right place. If you see that it's different, but you still want to learn it, then set that other stuff aside and focus on what you're getting on this new information, understanding it and processing it. And maybe, just maybe, just a little bit recapturing the joy that you had when you first started doing this and everything was new. Now, you might be someone who has a wealth of knowledge to share yourself. And going back and starting again might be because you're looking at teaching. But you're questioning, should I teach? Do I have anything to offer? Do I even have my edge anymore? Do I, do I have the abilities I once had? Do I have this stuff? Remember that at the end of the day, if you have knowledge that somebody else wants, sharing that knowledge is a noble thing. Do you move as sharply as you once did? Do you have the same body that your, that your younger self had? Are you the same athlete or are you an older athlete? Things might be different. You might not do them the same way. I think this is a benefit. I don't do things the way that I did 10 years ago. Even that short amount of time, I don't do them the same. I don't do them the same because of new knowledge and because of a new body not necessarily an upgrade. When I train, I may have come up with new ways to handle this new body and the new knowledge that I have. So I might have new ways of doing things that I can now share that I did not have and my younger self never would have had. So I have more. I have something extra. I have something different than I would have had. Can I move as fast or have the same amount of stamina as somebody who's, who's fresh out of high school or college? No. Do I have my own abilities to handle them and my lessons to teach or my ways to coach them to be better anyway, despite my ability to do exactly what they do? Yeah, you can still coach that. You can help them understand. Maybe you don't do things the way you used to, but you can show them how to do the way you do th things the way that you used to, because maybe they can do them that way and maybe they should for now. And then maybe over time, they also get to come to understand the way that you do them now. Because at some point, they might need to do them like that. Your knowledge is valuable. If there are people who want to learn from you, that is all that matters. 
if you're thinking about starting it and if you're not sure if you should because you're not sure if you're the right person, recognize that the right person for one person might not be the right person for someone else, but you might be the right person for some of these people. You won't be the right person for all of them. There might be people who know more, do more, are capable of more than you, and you recognize that. And this is where the imposter syndrome sets in because you go, why would you look at me when you can look at these people who know more, do more, are more capable, they're better than you? There are people that don't have what you have where maybe you're the right person to help them get to where they can also look to these other people and see the value of what those people bring by first understanding the value of what you bring. And maybe that's physical. Maybe that's mental. Maybe it's philosophical. Your thought processes, your tactics, your strategies, your concepts that you follow, that you believe in. There are people who want to know about those. So if you judge yourself according to something else and then question whether you can do what you can do, well, I think you're fundamentally flawed and you need to judge yourself against yourself. And then you need to consider the people who don't have what you have and decide if it's something that is worth giving. And if it is, then you should start again. You should share that knowledge. And either way, no matter what situation you're in of any of the things that I've said, if you have, if any part of you wants to start again, fan that flame. Surround yourself with people who are encouraging you to do so. Let people know. Be held accountable if you need to be. And start again. Put in the effort understand that there will be difficulties and challenges and that it might not be immediately comfortable and it might not be exactly what you remember but heaven forbid it might be better there might be something different there that you prefer know that if any part of you is ready to start again there's no reason why you shouldn't <laughs>